Hey, Costello, Costello, where have you been for the past three days? You would go out of town when I need you. Do you realize this day is the most important day in my life, Costello? Yeah. I finally bought an engagement ring. You bought an engagement ring? Yes. You did? Yes, little old pal. Doesn't it thrill you? Doesn't it make you happy? Uh, mm-hmm. Well, why, why don't you say something? Yeah, but I, I don't know what to say. Oh, come on, say anything. I'm so young, I'll have to get my parents' consent. Ah, oh, yes. <laughs> Dummy, I didn't buy the ring for you. Tonight I am proposing to the wealthy widow, Mrs. Carlotta Cranberry. Carlotta? Yes. Ah, a lovely woman. She made her money selling used cars, you know. Oh, I see. A sort of used Carlotta. No. <laughs> Costello, this is no joking matter. Carlotta is a beautiful girl. Oh, yeah. That's what you said about your first wife, Clementine. No, no, no. Don't talk about my first wife. Clementine was a good kid. Mm-hmm. When I met her, she was a trapeze artist with a circus. Yeah, she was so bow-legged. When she put her tights on, she looked like a pair of pliers with a band-aid. Uh, uh, <laughs> listen, Costello. <laughs> Costello, will you listen to me? Clementine was a beautiful woman. Why, oh. uh, she could sway men with her back turned. Yeah, sway back Clementine, they called her. <laughs> Costello, what makes you so bitter about marriage? Oh, I don't believe in marriage, Abbott. Marriage is like soup. Marriage is like soup? Yeah, after you get through spooning, it cools off. <laughs> trouble with you, Costello. <laughs> this is your whole trouble, Lou. <laughs> you don't know... You don't know what love is. Oh, yes, I do. Yes, I do. <laughs> yes, you did. Make up your mind. Do you know what love is? Oh, yes, I do. <laughs> Little birds make love. That we know. Little butterflies make love. Even peanuts make love. Uh, peanuts make love? You'd be surprised what goes on inside those shells. Oh. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm talking about old-fashioned romance. When I was calling my first wife, uh, Clementine, there was a big grandfather's clock in the parlor, and we right. used to sit and listen to a tick. Uh-huh. It said, hey, Take your time. Take your time. Uh-huh. Take your time. Uh-huh. Take your time. Yes, Cabot. Maybe true, but uh, things are different with modern lovers. What do you the mean? The day when a fellow sits in a parlor with a girl, there's an alarm clock on the mantel that says, Get together, get together, get together, get together, get together, get together. Get together. Well, I'll never forget that get old together. grandfather's clock, Lou. I'll never forget that old clock. You know, the day I married Clementine, it stopped. Your wife must have looked at it. Uh, and <laughs> Costello. When I married my wife, Everybody said it was a perfect match. Match is right. She struck you and you went out like a light. <laughs> well, at least I'm not henpecked. Not henpecked? Before you were married, you used to snore. Now you cackle. All right. <laughs> Never mind my face. Hey, hey. Will you stop that? Forget about Can my Can I story. help you to well, do right. it? <laughs> stop talking about those things and forget about my first wife. Now, this marriage is going to be different. What a lovely girl Carlotta is. Every night I'll sneak into the parlor and catch her in my arms. Yes, then you'll sneak into the bedroom and catch her in your pocket. <laughs> well, I don't want to hear another remark about Carlotta Cranberry. He's a member of society. Did you ever rub shoulders with the 400? No, but I rubbed hips with the 500. <laughs> where, where was that? At the Palladium. Oh, the blood I've invited, I've invited Carlotta here for dinner tonight. She thinks that I'm a big shot. And I want you to act as my butler. Can you butler? Can I what? Do you know how to butler? Do I know how to butler? Yes. I'll split a butler with you any time. <laughs> I want you to serve the dinner. You understand, Lily? I want you to serve the dinner. And, and get, our, get out our finest dishes and silver. Have you seen my uh, sugar bowl? Have I seen your what? Have you seen my sugar bowl? No, but she plays a nice game of pool. No, no, no. no. <laughs> You're going to mess up. <laughs> you mess up. <laughs> You'll mess up my whole evening home. <laughs> Mrs. Cranberry will ask for an hors d'oeuvre and you'll hand her a demi tasse. Look who's trying to learn me. Demi tasse. That word ain't demi tasse. It's demidacy. Yes, it is demidacy. Listen, don't you know the first thing about etiquette? Now, there you go with another one. That's not etiquette. It's a tickety. <laughs> you don't have to tell me about a tickety, Abbott. I'll go out and buy that book by Emily Pillar. I, no, no, no. You mean Emily Post. I'll read the both of them. Both of them? Yeah, I'll go from pillow to post. Oh, no. You don't have to read Emily Post. I'll tell you what to do. I'm up on all forms of social etiquette. Oh, you are, huh? Oh, yes, I am. Well, let me ask you a question, Abbott. Now, tell me this, Abbott. When you reach over to light a cigarette, will you light a cigarette with your right hand or your left hand? <laughs> I'll light it with my right hand, of course. That shows you how dopey you are. What do you mean? Most people use the man. 
Oh. <laughs> hey, Costello. <laughs> Costello. Now, Mrs. Cranberry is due here at 8 o'clock, and it's my cook's day off. Can you imagine that? Now, where am I going to get somebody to cook? I'll call Lana Turner right away. Oh, Costello, Lana Turner can't cook. She always brings me to a boil. All right. <laughs> When you talk sense, Costello, I have to get some food right away. I'll tell you what you do. You go around the corner to that little restaurant. You'll see a sign in the window that says Mother's Home Cooking. Now go in and ask for Mother. Okay. I'll go right in. And then when I... What does the sign say? It says Mother's Home Cooking. Oh, why should I go in the restaurant and ask for Mother? She's home cooking. <laughs> <laughs> mother isn't home cooking. Well, where is she? She's in the restaurant. Didn't you just tell me that the sign said Mother's Home Cooking? Well, that's right. Then how could she be in the restaurant? Does Mother live there? No, she lives at home. Then what's she doing in the restaurant? Home cooking. <laughs> that sign is making an awful liar out of mother. Wait a minute. It's after six o'clock. The restaurant is closed anyway. Mother wouldn't be there. Uh, where would mother be? Well, she's probably uh, home cooking. Let me smell your breath. <laughs> Come on, Costello. We haven't got a minute to lose. We'll have to go around to our friends and find somebody to cook the dinner or dig up some food. Yes, yeah, maybe my old girlfriend, Tessie Kimpero. Maybe she can help us out. Well, come on. Come let's, on let's go over go. to her house. Well, here's Tessie Tinfoil's house. I hope she's home. Go ahead and knock. Oh! Men, come in! <laughs> Hello, Tessie. Oh, hello, Mr. Abbott. And there you are, my fat little lover boy, Louis. Come to me. Let me hold you in my arms. Let me crush you to me. Well, say something, little lover boy. How can I? You got your knee on my chest. <laughs> Let me up! Oh, Louis, I'll bet you came to take me for a ride along the beach. It'll be so romantic. We'll drive to some out-of-the-way place where you can make love to me. I'm very appealing over candlelight and wine. You wouldn't appeal to me over beer and a flashlight. <laughs> Tessie, I came to you for help. I'm entertaining a big society woman for dinner tonight, and I have no cook. Uh, could you help me out? Oh, I'd love to, Mr. Abbott, but I've never been able to cook. I'll never forget the first meal I ever cooked. My husband sat down and ate it and left me. You mean he walked out on you? Why, no, he didn't walk out. Six men carried him out. <laughs> hey, um, look, Abbott, maybe Scotty's wife's home, and maybe we can get her to help you. Come on, I'll knock on the door. Go ahead. Oh, what do you want? <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. What are you doing here? Where's Scotty? Uh, Scotty's out of town. He went to San Francisco. San Francisco. San Francisco. San Francisco? Pismo Beach. <laughs> Down there and hired a boat to go out on the water. On the water. On the water. Water? No, thanks. I don't want to rush my stomach. <laughs> Look, mister, I'm in a spot. I need somebody to cook my dinner. Oh, you came to the right place. Yep. I make a wonderful stew. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, Costello. The actress, Bessie May Moocher, just pulled up in front of her apartment. Yoo-hoo! A Bessie! Oh, good evening, boys. Isn't this a lovely, balmy evening? I love to see the sun set behind the Hollywood Hills. <laughs> Isn't it too, too enchanting? Oh, yes, it's just too, too divine. <laughs> it is too, too divine and utterly picturesque queen. <laughs> Bessie, I'm in terrible trouble. I'm trying to find somebody to cook for us tonight. Uh, could you help us out? Oh, goodness, no. I'm one of those helpless damsels. This morning, I even burned my harm. Harm? Oh, sure, Abby, you know what harm is. You fry it with oogs and sprinkle it with salt and pepper. <laughs> <laughs> I finally wound up with just a gloss of milk and a cruller. Why, you poor, poor lost. You mean you didn't have butter too... <laughs> but, Busty, can't you help us out at all? We have to have some food. Well, all I have in the house is some sauerkraut, some raspberry jam, and some pizza cooler. Pizza cooler? <laughs> oh, whatever. Give me she's got a fiddle of soda poop pipe. Peep, poop, peep, 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 peep. Well, I must dart in for my evening bath. I hope you have good luck with your dinner. 
And as they say, I didn't have with that last joke. <laughs> well, as they say in Russian, pen your my or my bublitsky to you. And a pair of my old britches to you, too. <laughs> Costello, what am I going to do? My lovely Carlotta will be at the house in exactly an hour and a half. And where am I going to get a cook? Well, Abbott, there's only one place left. Where? I guess we'll have to ask Mrs. Niles. Oh, hello, boys. Gee, Mrs. Niles, this is the first time I ever saw you in flat. You have a nice shape. Wait a minute, Costello. My wife isn't here. Oh, pardon me, Ken. I didn't recognize you without your leash. Oh, quiet. <laughs> quiet, Costello. Where's Mrs. Niles? Well, she went downtown to get a beauty treatment. She's being offered a job as a cover girl. Magazine or manhole? <laughs> Quiet, Costello, will you please? Ken, do you know where I can get somebody to cook dinner for my girlfriend and me? Well, no, I don't. The only one in the house is a French maid, Fifi. Oh, wait a minute. I'll ask her if she can cook. Oh, Fifi. Oh, yes, Monsieur Niles. Oh, hello, Monsieur Abbott and Monsieur Costello. Hello, my little dish of pancakes. Pancakes? Why do you call me your little dish of pancakes? Because you're so nicely stacked. <laughs> Now, cut that out, Costello. Fifi, we need somebody to cook dinner tonight. What do yes, you say? Yes, Fifi. Monsieur, I can cook anything. I can make frog leg francaise, but does that party the foie gras from the terre jardinière? How about cement mixture, putty, putty? <laughs> Just name anything you want, Monsieur, and you can have it. Come over here and kiss your poor old father. <laughs> My darling Carlotta will be here in a few minutes. I told you to get into your butler suit, didn't I? Where in heaven's name did you get those striped pants? What's wrong with them? The stripes are supposed to run up and down, not around. Oh, I bought, <laughs> I bought these from my Uncle Petey Reed. He just got out of track. Oh, I knew you'd do something stupid. The good thing I sent for Professor Melonhead. Coming here to teach you the duties of a butler. Now, let's... Oh, wait a minute. That must be him now. Come in. Ah, good evening, Mr. Abbott. Well, Costello, I understand that we only have a few minutes in which I can show you the finer points of catering. Now, let's get busy. Mr. Costello, if you have one little ounce of intelligence, if you have one ounce of intelligence, I may be able to polish up your skill. One more crack like that, and I'll polish up your skull. <laughs> now, Costello, I'll have you know that I, Melonhead, was the greatest butler in the Dutch East Indies. I was known as Herr Von Melonhead. Now you're known as Von Herr Melonhead. <laughs> Get a load of that shiny tone. And the back, it looks like an empty... Never mind what it looks like. Costello, we have no time to wait. <laughs> we have no time to wait. Now, suppose your dinner is ready. How would you announce it to the guests? I just yelled, the grub is here. Come on and get it. No, no. Nothing like that. You stand in the doorway, your chest thrown out, your head tilted back, and with your nose pointed at the ceiling, you say, Dinner is now served. Are you teaching me something or are you smelling something? <laughs> Smelly, I'm trying to teach you how to be a butler. Now, how does a butler announce the dinner at your house? We haven't got a butler at our house. No butler? If you have no butler, how in heaven's name do you know when dinner is served? When my mother takes the iron bars off the dining room door. Costello <laughs> was impossible, Mr. Rabbit. Why, he doesn't even look like a butler. Look at me. I have the proper physique. Look at my shape. Ah, look at this leg. What a thigh. What a knee. What a calf. What an ankle. What a heel. <laughs> Look, Miss Melonhead, I've got a great idea. Why don't you stay and, and be my butler tonight? I'm sorry, Mr. Rabbit. I couldn't possibly remain under the same roof with this ignorant little nincompoop. Costello, I have a word of advice to you. With your limited intelligence, you better start saving your money. Remember, pennies grow into nickels. Nickels and dimes. Dimes and quarters. Quarters and a half. Pass and a dollar. Dollars and right. five. Five and a right. Pass and a fifty. All right. Pass and a thousand. Dollars and a thousand. Dollars and a All right. You sound like your mother was frightened by a cat. Mm. <laughs> Yes, but my mother rang the bell. <laughs> Good night. What an ugly individual. Oh, I wouldn't say that, Costello. There's something about Melonhead's face that grows on you. Glad it didn't grow on me. <laughs> oh, oh, Costello. Uh-oh. Fibber this... McGee. No, 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 no. Oh. This must be Carlotta. Oh, answer the door, Costello. And for heaven's sake, remember you're my butler. 
still nervous, Costello. Uh, hand me a drink of water, will you please? Here you are, here you are. Thanks. Uh, oh, I'm still nervous. I, I can feel my stomach jumping inside. Don't look now, but the water you just drank has three goldfish in it. Oh, <laughs> you fool, answer the door. Good evening, my good man. Is your master in? Hey, Abbott! Is this Halloween? Oh. I thought not. Lady, take off that mask. <laughs> I'm not wearing a mask. Well, then put one on. <laughs> I'm here for a dinner engagement with Mr. Abbott. Oh, you're Mrs. Loganberry. Young man, the name is not Loganberry. It isn't Strawberry. It isn't Huckleberry. It's the same Cranberry. Well, you better come in before the kids in the neighborhood give you the raspberry. <laughs> What's going on here? Oh, oh, my dear Collada, I'm so sorry. This young man is very new. Uh, one more remark from him and he'll never get old. Uh, <laughs> no, don't stand there. Take Collada's coat. Take her coat? Take her coat. Go ahead. Oh, me, eh? Me? Excuse me, the wind just changed. <laughs> Mr. Abbott, it was so nice of you to ask me to dinner. Oh, the pleasure's all mine, Mrs. Cranberry. Oh, please, not Mrs. Cranberry. Just call me Carlotta. And you can call me uh, Buddy. Oh, and you can call me Cosby. And you can call me uh, Budsy. And you can call me when this is over. <laughs> Budsy, darling, what an impertinent man. I have a feeling that I've seen this butler someplace before. It could have been at the Hollywood Legion Stadium last Monday night. What would I be doing at the Legion Stadium? Weren't you in a semi wind up with the sweetest angel? <laughs> Carlotta, darling, I must go into the kitchen and see how dinner is coming. Costello, show Mrs. Cranberry into the garden. Okay. <laughs> Costello, what happened? Did you show Mrs. Cranberry into the garden? Show her? I thought you said throw her. <laughs> Speak to me, Carlotta. Where are you? Costello, please, do something right. Put some romantic music on the Victrola. How about the beer barrel poker? Beer barrel poker? That isn't romantic. It is if you drink the beer first. <laughs> but, dear, I can't stand much more of this. Send that horrible person away. Costello, go into the kitchen and finish up preparing the food. Carlotta, sit down here at the piano and sing something for me. Oh, I'd be glad to. It's you again. He knew that you were coming here for dinner tonight, so he brought this for you. What is it? 